So a year ago, two phones battled for supremacy very early on in the year, at least on the Android side of things. That was the Galaxy S10 Plus. And let me tell you something, that OnePlus 7 Pro, baby. Oh, there's so much beautiful blue going on right now. As you may know, I love blue phones and right now I'm in heaven. But of course, we're now in 2020 and these are not the number one flagships anymore. Which one is better in 2020 and which one should you buy if you're looking to save a little bit of money and have an amazing phone? The Galaxy S10 Plus, the OnePlus 7 Pro. We're going to figure it out together right after this. This, this is, uh, you know you listening to, to Travis. <laughs> What up, players? Welcome back, and for all you new people, welcome. My name's Travis, and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing if that sounds like fun to you. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Anything I talk about will be in the description below, but for now, let's just get into the video. So as I've talked about in my last video, I got a renewed, Amazon renewed, Galaxy S10 Plus. And let me tell you something, it's a great phone. I did not own this in 2019, so it's kind of my first time through using it. And many of you who've been around the channel for at least most of 2019 know about this, the OnePlus 7 Pro, and the things that I went through with this phone, buying it, returning it, missing it, and then buying it again. Like, it was a weird year. And while I never declared one particular phone the king of 2019, my favorite Android experience last year was the OnePlus 7 Pro. There's a lot of reasons behind that. I'll talk a little bit about them in this video, and I've talked about them before in other videos. But for those of you that are new, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you know why. But again, I never had the Samsung Galaxy S10 or S10 Plus because I'm a Note guy. I get all the Galaxy Note phones, so I kind of always bypass the S series. But since this renewed Amazon series I've been doing seems to be pretty popular and you all seem to like it, you know, I decided to go ahead and buy one and let me tell you something, I'm glad I did. So for those of you that missed that, I'll leave a link in the description and in the end card. Make sure you see how I came across this for under $500. That's right, a darn new, brand spanking new looking Galaxy S10 Plus for under $500. Again, watch the video that I talk about this. So if you're thinking about buying one or the other, let's talk about the pros and cons of each because neither is perfect. They both do some really cool things. And I'll be honest right now, you won't go wrong with either, but I really believe there's certain people that are gonna want one over the other. Since in 2019, we started with the Samsung Galaxy S10 line of phones. Let's start with it here. Of course, as you know, this is the flagship of the beginning part of 2019 for all Android phones. Uh, the first Samsung phone with an in-display fingerprint sensor that works pretty darn well, um, the last Samsung flagship with a headphone jack, which I know some of you are still heard about. And one of the last, not the last, but one of the last with the Bixby button. Thank goodness. Thank goodness that's gone. But more importantly, this thing had a bunch of really cool features that were never on Samsung phones before, such as reverse wireless charge. Now, as we know, this thing can wirelessly charge. That's, that's not a new thing. But now you can charge other wireless devices that charge through Qi Wireless on the back of this phone. Something new and exciting. Uh, well, I mean, it was new to Samsung users as Huawei had actually done this before. And this thing has the Snapdragon 855 processor, which makes it a really fast processor and really fast phone even today. To be honest, there isn't any app out there right now that won't run exceptionally well on this phone. And as people in the comments of my last video have said, the ones that still have it, they really run incredibly fast. And I have not been able to slow this thing down at all. All day battery life, reverse wireless charge, and a darn good camera. But I wanna save the camera part for later for the comparison because I believe that's one of the things that's gonna kind of sway you one way or the other in these two phones. Uh, but maybe not as much as you might think. Now, when I do my full review of the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus in 2020, I will go over some of these next features more in depth, but I just wanna give you kind of a 30,000 foot view of one of the things that this thing has that the OnePlus does not. And that is Samsung Pay and DeX. Let's start with Samsung Pay. Now, for those of you that don't know what that is, it really is the best mobile payment that you can use anywhere. Uh, Apple Pay is okay, I guess, but the MST that this phone uses, the magnetic strip thing, you know, when, you, when you're getting ready to zip your little credit card thing on there and you take out your phone and it works, is pimping. 
I love taking out my Galaxy Note lines of phones, going to a place and getting ready to pay with my phone, and they tell you, no, no, I'm sorry, we don't have that here. And you plop it down, and payment is made. You walking out like a champion with that. Samsung Pay, unrivaled. I don't care if you're an Apple Pay fan or not, unrivaled. And Dex, let me tell you something about Dex. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this in depth in the final review, so make sure you're subscribed because I, I do wanna talk about that. To me, it's one of the more exciting features that I think is underutilized and underpromoted on this particular phone. My friend Knoopsy has done multiple videos on this. I want you to check him out. I'll leave a, like a card to him up here. He's gonna show you how to take a phone like this and he'll probably show it with the S20, but it all works the same and make it into like a mini computer. It is absolutely fantastic. And that's what really makes this thing amazing and sets it apart from all other phones, all other manufactured phones. You plug a USB-C to HDMI in and you have a desktop running, a legit desktop. It's craziness. What I like about this is when you come home from work, you, well, I mean, some of you, some of you haven't been out of the house for a while, or when things get normal again, you come home, you plug in your USB-C to either HDMI, which can go to a television or a monitor, or directly into your computer, and now you have access to super powerful decks. I think that's such an incredible thing because not only can you answer text messages and, and use all the things and the files that are on your phone with a keyboard and bigger monitor, like there's no reason to even put it right on the charger and be away from it. If you're in front of a desktop or a laptop, it can be with you at all times. You can even answer calls uh, through your computer. That is one of the coolest things ever. And there's just no way that currently the OnePlus 7 Pro can match that. So between those things, especially Samsung Pay, reverse wireless charge, wireless charge, and of course DeX, this thing is a beast, hard to beat. The OnePlus 7 Pro came out of nowhere as far as I'm concerned. Like I had no interest in getting this phone before it was before it came out, I had no idea anything about OnePlus. Uh, and then it came out and rocked my world. One of the first phones offered in America with an over 60 Hertz display, in this case, 90 Hertz, uh, and Oxygen OS, which is incredibly optimized, is a beast and still the only major flagship phone in available in America, and I know some people overseas are gonna say something different, that has a completely uninterrupted display. In other words, there's no hole. And that's such a big thing. For me, that is a huge thing because an uninterrupted display looks awesome with video content and this screen is much brighter. I mean significantly brighter than the S10 Plus. I was shocked by this. They both use OLED displays, but for some reason, the OnePlus 7 Pro is brighter. I can't show you this on camera. I've tried to figure out a way to record it so you can see it, but just trust me, it's significantly brighter. And the fingerprint sensor is ridiculously fast, like so fast that it makes it a joy to use. It's optical, not sonic, which is less, you know, secure, but I don't care. I just want to get into my phone fast. But this thing feels like it's a speed demon. And that's because of really two things the 90 Hertz display and the speed of the operating system. Some people think high refresh rate phones are a gimmick and by themselves it can be, but when you match it with an incredibly optimized and fast operating system, it makes everything so snappy, you literally wanna use your phone more. And that's what happened with me. Every time I would use this phone, it was just a joy to use. Everything was fast. There was never a time this thing was slow. The battery did get me through an entire day there wasn't any reason for me to ever want to use another Android phone in 2019. I bought a, a Note 10 Plus, but that was a mistake. Now, of course, some of the things this is missing, no wireless charge. And while there's no IP rating on this thing, it, it is kind of water-ish proof. They just don't want to put their name on that. And they didn't want to pay for that, which I like. OnePlus pretty much has a more or less waterproof phone, but didn't want to pay for the certification to pass on the savings. And when this thing came out, it was substantially cheaper than the S10 Plus. But now they're about the same price, especially if you get them uh, renewed, like I did with the S10. Now let's talk about the cameras on these two because this is the one thing that's really gonna differentiate one from the other. They are both excellent cameras. The front-facing cameras on both is great. The rear-facing cameras on both are really good. Now when the OnePlus 7 Pro first came out, there were some issues with quality. It wasn't exactly up to par, but there's been a lot of updates, which is one thing I wanna give a shout out to OnePlus about. A lot of updates that have come and fixed a lot of those issues. And now if you 
take a picture with it, they actually look really good. And as you look at these pictures, you'll notice they both look great. Now, if you compare them to each other, obviously you will see differences. And maybe as someone who may buy one or the other, you should take a look at that. But in a vacuum, when you're not comparing them directly to anything else, they both look fine, including the very inexpensive OnePlus 7 Pro or OnePlus 7T. They're basically the same phone. Here's the thing. There was kind of a problem and now there isn't a problem. You really should not be disqualifying yourself from buying this phone because of bad picture quality. It's just not a thing. And by the way, if you sideload the Gcam uh, app, the APK, this thing takes pictures on another level completely. So basically you're looking at two excellent phones that can be purchased this year for an inexpensive price. Which one do you buy? Well, I think this is actually kind of simple. Now, first of all, the pricing is so similar between the two that I can't use that as a disqualifying factor for each, unless you buy them new, in which case I believe the OnePlus 7 Pro or OnePlus 7T is maybe a hundred-ish dollars cheaper than the S10 Plus. Having said that, if you get them renewed or used or something like that, they're gonna be right around the same price. Now, the OnePlus 7 Pro has a brighter screen has more of a screen. It's actually taller and it just has a bigger screen altogether and is a little bit thicker. So if you like a phone that fits in your hand a little bit better with a, a taller screen, maybe more real estate area, the OnePlus 7 Pro is easily the one to choose. And by the way, if you want to just have good picture quality with incredible speed in the entire operating system in a way that you probably have never experienced, this is absolutely my recommendation. Having said that, if you want features on features on features, it's all about the Galaxy S10 Plus. Not only does it have all the features that this thing launched with, it's getting more features every year, including some of the things, especially some camera tricks that the S20 line of phones just recently got. So it's getting continually updated by Samsung to have some of those cool new features. So if you want wireless charge, reverse wireless charge, DeX, Samsung Pay, if you want all of those cool things, extras, you obviously buy this. It's not that hard to understand. Are you a simple person? You want something that's fast, quick, and get you to it, get you through it? It's the OnePlus 7 Pro. If you want all the features, all the cake, and all the ice cream on top of it, it's the Samsung phone. Of course, both are great purchases right now. But basically what I'm saying is you can't lose with either. They're just for different people. But leave me a message in the comments below. Let me know which one you have or which one you would buy, and we'll discuss it. And don't forget to watch the video about the S10 when I purchased it and the upcoming S10 review. Make sure you subscribe for that and watch one of these videos. Peace and love, peace and love.